so um, Chris, what's happening in Japan? What are they doing in terms of preparation or uh, what's going on in the Japanese, what I call the destruction or destructed site? We can't call it a, a decommissioned plant. It's a destructed site for the nuclear plant there. But they're still reactivating nuclear plants around Japan. In fact, I heard they just authorized two more plants to be reactivated. Uh, what's happening? <clears throat> Well, you know, I just talk about that earthquake uh, just just for a minute. You know, it did, it did and from what, from what I'm reading, it certainly uh, seems to coincide with a new moon at its perigee, or very close to a coincidence of that. So, that, and that was uh, so. Uh, that's kind of interesting that you did a couple of really large earthquakes in that area. Of course, 6.9 is pretty big, and so is an 8. Point, uh, the Newfoundland one. So. Uh, what are you, you know, your question was, what are we doing to prepare for that other than just, uh, you know, run? Because really, uh, the, the buildings are in really a state of disrepair at uh, Fukushima, and there's uh, been some new video released of what could be the molten, some of the, some of the corium that is, uh, has, has leached out. And remember, if we talked, we talked a long time ago, that some of it is not solid and it's still oozing in, in, in that respect. And this video showed something that if it, if it weren't just metal uh, melted, but it sure looked like if, if it is corium, then it would be oozing, and which, which would lend credibility to our lava lamp effect that we've been talking about for really a long time now. And thus little recriticality is going on and causing uh, continued heat. So if that's the case, and this, this robot was like a, it looked like a, like a snake, really, they call it a snake. And it can get through a pipe and, and do some stuff. Of course, you'll never see that. You'll never see that. You'll be able to touch that robot again. It's in there for good now. But um, uh, certainly there were some pretty interesting images of it. And so your question is, you know, what are you going to prepare? Well, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's late uh, in the game for uh, preparing at that Fukushima itself, other than uh, you, you can see how frustrating the attempts are to contain the mess into some, and some area, let alone treat it. I mean, you saw how hard it is to treat it. They have uh, thousands of tanks. There are... Uh, well, there's a brand new strontium catcher that they put in service, and they're just treating the water that's in the tanks being stored before they release that water. So, you know, if you really think about it, once you remove the strontium, well, it didn't, it, it didn't disappear. Now what do you do with it? You know, now you got a pile of sludge that's, uh, that you have to dispose of, you know, and the water may be clean, but you still have the sludge there. Now they're constructing and getting ready to put it into service. The, uh, I go, it looks like a it looks like a huge barn. I mean, lots of huge barns where you can store the dirt or the soil that you can dig down, you know, several meters down, and that's the contaminated soil and store that. So really, uh, you're playing a shell game. You know, the, the fuel was never designed to leave the uh, cladding. The fuel. Right. That was the first line of defense. Once that gets broken, and then the containment gets broken, and, and or even before that, the reaction gets broken. The genie's long gone the bottle, and and that's really uh, well. Well, the thing is, the, none of the things we were recommended over the past almost now four years, uh, Chris, have actually been done. We recommended muon or ground penetrating directors to detectors to find out where the corium is. We recommended a seawall. Uh, an additional seawall and a containment area below the reactor site toward the ocean so they can collect any water that's seeping out of the aquifer. We recommend that they get a, an efficient system for converting liquid to solid waste and bioconcentrating it so they can make a solid uh, material to dispose of in double hull ships at the bottom of tin or zinc mines. And we and they continue to do stupid things like putting things in tanks and then not having the tanks properly riveted together. Uh, they, they they continue to say that they're going to decommission it when they can't even get their workers in there or even efficient robots. And the snake robot they're talking about, I can't see it surviving the vortices of high energy plasma physics of electron, uh, we call dust intervals if you want to call it, <laughs> uh, or the neutron flux or the high levels of gamma rays that will de destroy any integrated circuits. So none of these robots they're talking about are on cabled or hydraulic systems. I can't see them surviving actually to go in there to, to even move anything. Uh, they're not decommissioning anything. I, I just, they're rearranging the deck chairs on the, 
on the Titanic Fukushima disaster zone. We've had uh, you know U.S. nuclear agencies and think tanks actually estimate that if this is not solved, Fukushima in 2050 will be an extinction level event for the northern hemisphere. Um, I think people downplay it. You know, it's not in the news, so it's not on front page. In fact, I'm going to be next week on a, uh, the Red Pill uh, show. They actually convinced me, although I can't really do a lot of other shows. I'm so busy doing my consulting and research and other work I do behind the scenes. You have no idea about because I am doing research and trying to set up IRB studies and working with people in other countries and consulting with doctors and patients all over the world. What I see happening <clears throat> is nothing. I don't see even people questioning that, uh, saying our ideas are full of hogwash and that they would even attack them, because even attacking them would allow us to say, okay, let's get a better paradigm, let's get a better idea, let's ask better questions, let's work toward a, a real concrete solution that has steps that can take care of Fukushima, but also take care of the danger of poorly managed nuclear reactors that are well beyond the geriatric age all over the world. Many of them sitting on fault lines or tsunami zones, like all the reactors in Switzerland are sitting on fault lines. Most of the reactors in America are either on fault lines or in tsunami zones on the coast. Uh, I think that we don't just have foresight, we actually have blind sight. Uh, we don't plan anything. We actually ignore even the common sense that might increase the chances that we won't completely lose containment of a reactor or we won't have a backup power blackout that we can actually handle. Uh, I don't think we, we actually have injured with such a sharp pencil we're, we're literally tempting disaster which is going to get us. And they just moved in four new portable mortuaries around the New Madrid fault system which we've been working on for years in case New Madrid causes dozens of reactors to go critical and lose control if they have a major earthquake there at New Madrid in the southwestern United States, southeastern United States. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, Chris, what do you think? Well, let's just go look at the uh, Australian Broadcasting uh, Commission's article just on February 18th yesterday, and that was uh, one of the correspondents that uh, pretty much uh, sorting out uh, reactor building number four is going to be the easiest of all, since there wasn't anything in the, in the core itself, you know, and then, right. that's one thing. But, but one, two, and three... Forget about it. You know, you, uh, you can't even go in there. And this is something we say. You can't even go in. It's instant death. Robots right. And the same with these robots. I don't think the robots are going to survive going in there either, do you? No, it says, no, in, fact, in fact, it says very much that. The massive radiation level, no robot can, can actually, uh, they haven't yet to be designed to, uh, to withstand that type of radiation field. And we don't even know where the uh, actual... Uh, locations of the fuel uh, are, I guess, are. The fuel exactly, is. yeah. Up until now. And welcome back. And uh, so, the, of course, the thesis behind all of this, uh, Chris, and we talked about this on the break with Tim, uh, is they not only want population reduction, they want to actually have people in the not too distant future licensed to reproduce. They want to get rid of uh, wild reproduction. In Japan, for example, I'm sure it's becoming a harsh reality that not only were they contracting the population because 20% of males, 25 to 30, are now considered herbivores that have no intention of ever getting married or having any physical relationship with a woman. Uh, we have a collapsing Japanese population long before Fukushima. Now it's really collapsing. And the chances, if they even have a pregnancy that's being normal in northern Japan, it's within a reasonable distance or a downwind of Fukushima Daiichi or nearby prefectures is becoming very distant. Uh, it's probable that the Japanese, who are the most advanced in terms of human genetic engineering and cloning, will start trying to create artificial uh, factories for making babies. They'll have some euphemistic term, no call it. But eventually the globalists want to outlaw all wild reproduction, and they want to, in the first world, make sure that, that they can exclude genes that will be cause uh, for concern by the globalists that you'll resist tyranny. Uh, they may put out the carrots that they can say they can eliminate gene complexes that cause disease or allow for life extension. But you and I know that eventually what they want to do is have a subclass of genetically engineered uh, humans, and they want an elite superclass uh, that's genetically enhanced and cybernetically enhanced to the supernet and the intelligent networks of artificial intelligence supercomputers so that they can rule the world and live for millennia. Not really unlike that new movie that just came out, although it's kind of bizarre and kind of stupid in places, uh, Jupiter Ascending, which was very campy. But it came up with a few principles of a parasitic overclass that ruled the 
universe, <clears throat> you're literally harvesting populations of world Akrati Sira that would extend the lifespan of the overclass to millennia. And uh, what people need to understand is some of those principles are operational right now, but not to the same kind or scientific extent. That the superclass, they don't just get off on uh, having all the money and power, they get off on ending not only the physical life, but the spiritual life of millions. They get off at hampering the human race and advancing itself to a higher order spirituality and physical and scientific endeavors so we don't end up consuming oxygen when we generate fuel. We get, eliminate war rather than making war as a dialectic for change and social change by the globalists because they see it as the most powerful weapon to change the social power structure so they always maintain it on top. It's very disturbing. So, Chris, tell us what, yeah. what's next. I mean, what I see is now these earthquakes are increasing, and I see very little motion to actually not decommission all these reactors and switch to natural gas, which was offered to Japan some years ago by a U.S. company and was blocked by Obama. And Obama, of course, with his his friends uh, with uh, the, uh, Raya, the Berkshire Hathaway uh, Enterprises and the railway that carries in the oil and gas at three times the cost of the pipeline that would bring in oil and gas and tar sands oil from Canada. Uh, this is all part of the same game by the globalists to control energy, to control the health care, to control life extension, to make the world toxic, to literally create uh, all of the dialectics so they can maintain control through evil. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, they will get by with the least amount of effort and expenditure to accomplish whatever it is that they, whatever, the, whatever bolsters the bottom line, what that means is, if, if, you, if you need these many safety systems to be robust against all these different natural hazards, they'll find a way to say this one is good enough. And you know, when you know, let's go to this. I was just uh, I was writing an article today about a, a, a use, the use of the fire protection system, like they tried to do at Fukushima, and what we're relying on uh, here in the United States too for uh, certain certain events is that well, the water wasn't really going down into the core. You know, we didn't really know where we we believed that all we had to do is pump pump water through this fire protection system, open up a valve that and that should have admitted water. But what we didn't realize is that what well, we actually do realize it was that establishing a flow path that doesn't have leakage and other branch flows off the places where you don't want it, you might you might not be effective in getting the water to where to where it needs to be. And that is exactly what dooms unit two at Fukushima when they go ahead and they try to uh, use a different flow path and uh, although it looked like it, it should have worked, they didn't isolate all the other lines and they couldn't. They really couldn't get in there to do all that. No. And so if that's what we're and that's a cheap it's a cheap, dirty way to say we're covered, but in reality you're not covered. And that's that's really what's so dangerous about it. Now, what, what, what do you think is going to happen to the contracting world economy, a contracting world health status, a contracting food supply from major climate change? By the way, the Fukushima with the plasma physics there is changing the weather systems of the planet as well. It's, just, it's accelerating a lot of what I call extreme weather. It's another factor along with the Macon drill site in the Gulf of Mexico that disconnected the pacemaker of the loop current. We had Dr. Zangari on well three years ago. He won't come back on because he's terrified for his own life. I tell people the best way to uh, worry about to, to, to counter terror is to show extreme drive, extreme uh, aggressiveness, extreme uh, no holds bar attitude toward dealing with the truth, rather than cowering uh, with the globalists. We, cowering, we do that pretty well on this show, I think, don't you? Yeah, no cowering allowed. <laughs> in, in fact. I challenge them on a spiritual and physical level. Come, come and try to get me, and just see what the consequences will be. They'll be grisly. And uh, ultimately, my God is God, and He's going to crush your bones and annihilate you in a place called the Lake of Eternal Fire, where you're no longer going to exist. And uh, so you need to understand: you're not just dealing with battling with, you know, a, a human being here and a collective of humans that actually gets gets it. <clears throat> You're dealing with the creator god of the universe. It's our father, our dad. Our dad doesn't like what you're doing to us, and he's going to take you out. And uh, yeah. Yeah, what I see happening is a lot of people still want to argue, oh, I don't see it in the news, so Fukushima's not a problem. I don't see it in the news, so 
the economy is not collapsing. I'm thinking uh, you need to look at all these signs. What you post pointed out today, Tim, was that we are literally sitting on the edge of World War Three, or as you say, the burn of Battle of Armageddon. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, can I, I, I? There was something I didn't get in in, in the first half hour. I, I want to mention this, uh, and I think it's very important because it shows the ability of the Obama administration and other puppets in Washington to dramatically change uh, events. Right. Uh, Obama has uh, uh, has put in motion a plan to allow so-called moderate. Syrian rebels to call in U.S. Air Force uh, attack aircraft and even B-1B strategic bombers for close air support in Syria and Iraq. Now, right. who are these so-called moderate Syrian rebels fighting? Well, they're fighting the, the Syrian government. So this is, uh, and, and this slipped under the radar of uh, the mainstream media, of course, and even um, some of the... Uh, oh, or Congress. Media. In Congress, too, because it's basically an act of war. And what the Russians said already, if you deploy weapons in Ukraine, I think this air attack against uh, their ally, Syria, will directly provoke Russia into redeploying well, major it, naval it, it, forces. It, and it, it may, in fact, be the, <clears throat> the, the reason for it. But, I, of course, uh, the, they're losing in Syria, just as they're losing in Ukraine big time. But uh, the, the, the Russians and the Chinese are, and the Iranians are not going to allow uh, Obama to attack directly uh, the Syrian government. And in fact, no. uh, there's a report out today that uh, a number of European countries are now considering uh, reestablishing diplomatic relations with Syria. Uh, people are, are at, at the government level or have now woken up. This thing in Ukraine has really shook them up. And they said, oh my God, you know, we're, we're literally minutes away from all out World War III and another war that will destroy Europe. And, and uh, they, they see the connection to Israel, to Syria, the whole bit, and they don't want it. Uh, right. They don't want to go there. Well, and none of us, well, nobody with a brain that, that is functional, uh, should want to go uh, to where World War III is. Yeah, I, what I see happening is exactly what you paint, a picture that the people are waking up, they've been manipulated toward war, and they've already tasted of it twice since the 20th century, and they've said, had enough. Yeah. Uh, thank God. Thank God forces of self-preservation and common sense are presiding over the insanity of what Obama and the bankers want to do. Amen. To maintain, to maintain control, and uh, that's why they're not fixing Fukushima. Chris, any kind of final comments? Yeah. I just, uh, you know, just, uh, just keep your eye on on uh, what's going on with the rest of the plants in the world. I know Pilgrim had a shutdown due to another snowstorm, a second time in a row. Just uh, let you know, I'll, I'll keep my eye open and let you know.